Well, you know what this means. This week I learned bubble text. Let's jump in DaVinci Resolve and I'm gonna show you how I've made it happen. So here we are into DaVinci Resolve. My timeline is being set up already and what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a fusion composition from the FX library on top of the existing clip. Now right click, open in fusion page because today we're gonna walk in the fusion page. Drag and drop the text node, drag it then into the media output, that's what we're gonna see. And here we can type some text like hey hey hey. And if I go back into my edit page, we will see that this is exactly what is being displayed. So we're on the right track. Now we need to tune that text. So let's go into the shading, go into property number two and enable that. And that will turn that red outline there. Not exactly what we want, but the right direction. Let's click on the appearance button right here. And then we can see that it's nearly there. Some gap between the letter. Let's fix that by opening the level and then go to text. If now I'm zooming out, we can see that all of my text is highlighted. To get the round corner, simply bring the value of round all the way to the max. And here we can see we got nearly what we want. Now let's change the color. It's the text I'm receiving. So we're gonna go with some kind of gray. This sounds about right to me. And now obviously we need to change the color of the text. So back to text, change the color, same principle. And here we are. If now we check back the result in the edit page, we can see we got a first message. Looks great, I'm very happy. Now in the fusion page, before going any further, let's do some change. Let's reset the view, that's the first start. And then let's try to maximize the display that we have. So let's get rid of that left viewer. There we go. Now before we go ahead and do some copy pasting, let's give ourselves some space. Let's reduce the size of the text, then let's place it into the right upper corner. Before we go there all the way through, maybe one thing to notice is that if I add some text, everything moves around. This is not really neat. So what we want is to anchor it vertically and horizontally into the corner so that if I add text, nothing really moves. It just kind of extend the bubble nicely. So now let's look at what happens if the text is a little bit bigger. As you will see, it doesn't really look well around the corner. That A there is a bit isolated. So let's give ourselves a little bit of space in the shading. Let's do a bit of padding. We can do that by extending vertically and horizontally. I like 0.03, it's a value that works quite well. We can experience with that depending on the font you might be using, you might need something bigger. But there we go, that's what works for me. So now let's place it. I like to do this by moving the little arrow one direction at a time, but here I'm gonna cheat a little bit. Let's go into the layout and put the Y into 0.9. That gives us a nice position and we'll use that later to move it one step at a time. To finish the setup of that first node, go into settings and activate the motion blur. Spoiler alert, this is gonna be critical later. Now that this is all done, let's copy paste the node and we can simply change the text. What is it for dinner? And now we can adjust it. That layout that we set up, 0.9, let's change that to 0.8. And as we can see, we have that nice little space there. Okay, now we can do a third note. Let's copy paste again. Let's move it on the other side for the response. And let's change the text to, um, after all, you shouldn't rush dinner. It's a very important decision. Let's move that to 0.7 and nearly there. However, this is my response. So now I need to go and change my anchoring. And here, like you, I'm discovering the tool, I'm trying to learn and I've made a mistake. So, so make sure to only change the horizontal anchoring because the vertical one is something we want to keep. Okay, let's move to the other side. Now we're gonna change the color. I'm gonna speed this up because you already know how to do that. So after I'm done fidgeting, colors change. There we go, blue, color white, looks nice, sharp. Great, amazing, love it. Back to Fusion. Now we're gonna be able to do another response. Copy paste, exactly the same as before. Here we're gonna be able to make a decision. I think pizza sounds great. I love a good pizza. That's something you need to know about me. As before, we'll change the position 0.6 and on the edit page now it looks great. A bit big, so let's reduce the size just to make sure that it can fit nicely into the corner depending on where your talent is and how you want to position that on the screen. That's really where you can start to adjust things. As you can see, looking a little bit for something I do like, but there it sits nicely, I do like it. But we are missing maybe who is sending me a text, like it would be great to know who sent that. So let's bring another text note and decide who is it that sent us a text. In our case, friend sounds about great. Now you'll notice you can't see that and that is because that node hasn't been merged with the output. So let's bring a merge mode, mode, no, <laughs> merge node, connect them, reconnect everything and now put it back to the media output like so. Obviously this is way too big, so let's select a text node and move it around, place it roughly where we want it to be and change the size to make it way smaller. Now don't go too small here. Keep in mind that in your edit page, all of this is reduced even further. But there roughly in terms of size and perspective, it sounds about right to me. So here we go and we're good to go. 
Well, not exactly, right? This is all displayed at once. It's a composition. It doesn't have any animation. And that's really what you're gonna start doing now. So select the frame on which you want the text to be completely appear and click on the diamond next to the center in the layout tab. Then go back to the first frame, drag it outside of the frame as I'm doing now to make sure that it won't be displayed at first. Once we've done that with one, and if we go then frame by frame, we can see that our text is now entering slowly and with the blurred. Remember that blur motion we've activated earlier on? This is exactly why we've turned it on. Okay, now that we've done with one, let's do it for all of the others. I'm gonna time lapse here because there is no point in me doing it multiple times and explaining it, so let's do it quickly. As I'm going through it, notice how those blue bubbles don't really go outside of the frame. They are still there, they are still visible, and this is not what we want. So even though I'm building the animation to bring everything in frame where I want it to, bringing them outside and then bringing them back will be way too far. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply a mask to restrict exactly what is being displayed. We can do that by grabbing the rectangle. I tried to drop it on the line to self-connect, didn't work, but hey, I'm not gonna stop there. I'm going to resize it roughly what I would like the screen size to be. Doesn't have to be very accurate just to give us an idea. Now I'm simply gonna connect it to my merge and ta-da, the magic is there. We still have the friends, we'll take care of that later, but now we can see that everything appears right as we want it to. So for the friend, we will do something similar, except that rather than coming from the left, I try to go from the bottom and up. I'll play with the size a little bit just to make it pop up, but this is quite basic, so if you got everything up so far, you should be fine there. Now let's look at the results, and this is roughly what I want to. Perfect, looks great. However, this is only the visual. I want some sound as well, so let's bring some sound effect. One for the message I received, one for the message I sent, I duplicate them because I've got them twice, and now I need a typing effect. For that, I'm gonna take a long segment, this is way too long, so let's identify the section that sounds better, let's bring it in, and then we're gonna resize it for just what we need. Looks great, let's see what it looks like, complete it. And with this, we're nearly there. One detail though, let's go back to the Fusion page and I'll explain. I don't know if you notice, but the text doesn't move with us. So what we want is to track that. So let's add a plain tracker. From there, we can simply decide what we want to track. Here, I'm gonna go around the finger. You don't need to be precise. We just want to track roughly the position of the phone. Now, to avoid any kind of weird rotation before you can start tracking, let's change the motion type to translation, just to make sure that we don't get the rotation as well. Once done, let's create a plain transform object and let's cut and copy paste it back into a fusion composition to move all the text with us with the finger to make sure that thing stays together. So once again, back to edit, back to fusion, paste the note, and then here it goes straight in the right place. If you don't have it straight away, just connect it. But now as we move everything, the text moves with us, and this is what we get. And here we go. I hope you've enjoyed this little tutorial. There's a lot to do in the Fusion page. There is a lot more for me to learn over there. And I'm gonna share that with you with the upcoming videos. So you know what to do. In the meantime, I'll leave you here. That is it for today. Until next time, ciao.